be adding six more up on the upper side when they get in. And I've got them all wired in series in parallel and I use the Renogy MC4 branch connectors that you can see there. And on the top two on the back side here I had to get a uh, an extension to tie those two together. But um, I highly recommend if you're going to be incorporating solar power get the MC4 connectors and the wires. They're UV resistant unlike these ones from uh, they're made by Coleman and you can see the Sun has got them faded even though they're, they're out of the direct sunlight they need to be switched over to MC4 as well because uh, they won't hold up but uh, it's always I guess it's easy to to do the math ahead of time to see how much power you're going to be using but what I recommend if you find out uh, like I did I there earlier this summer I incorporated a, a wind turbine purchased online assuming I was going to be getting 400 to 600 watts which was the advertised power I had it on the uh, 35 foot pole and leveled and the maximum I got was 10 watts so I wasn't long returning that uh, hybrid systems I don't recommend if you're going to have limited daylight or a lot of bad weather with cloudy days what I suggest you do is to incorporate enough solar array have enough panels to make up for the loss with uh, with the UV and as well your charge controller um, spend the extra money up front and get get a charge controller that will allow you to expand your solar array in the future if you decide to go that way otherwise if you buy a charge controller it's only gonna allow you to use what you initially set up and you want to expand in the future then that charge controller may no longer be useful and uh, so you're kind of stuck with it then so that's what I recommend um, midnight solar and the Outback um, they usually allow up to 150 volts and they can uh, they can put out on the other end about 80 amps so that's what I would consider if you're going to be consuming a lot of power like I do here another great option that's out on the market now are solar refrigerators and um, I am um, I'm gonna purchase a 10 cubic foot one here and um, that will uh, they I think the 10 cubic foot only consumes 55 watts of power very super efficient so I highly recommend uh, if you're gonna go that route um, it's uh, it's literally inexpensive and cheaper than propane or electric so Anyways, uh, just uh, if, as you can see, I've got the mono crystal lines that are made by Renogy, and I've got two Coleman, and they're the poly crystal lines. Um, both are pretty, pretty much the same when it comes to to collecting your your solar power. So, and I just thought I'd share this. Now that it's balanced, and the guy lines are attached, and I've got the wire uh, protected with the loom. There is uh, literally no noise whatsoever. Now I just need to uh, ensure that we're getting maximum power out of it to charge the battery bank. This is the latest upgrade to my solar power here at my off-grid cabin and um, what I recommend if you're going to be adding batteries uh, to your existing battery bank not to tie them together uh, they just won't work out well so I've got two battery banks now this is my original with the four 6 volt L16s they're all now tied in as a 24 volt system and I've got 10 12 volt AGM batteries as well. They're 75 amp hour each, so um, 
that's uh, 750 amp hour total and these ones are 780 amp hour total and I don't discharge them any lower than 50 percent um, so with a 24 volt system the way I've got them tied in I don't let them go down below 24.05 volts um, and this is the new magnum energy magna sign pure sign wave inverter and a charger it's uh, 4000 watts and um, it's got two 30 amp chargers so your AC power coming in from your alternate power source via generator in my in my situation the generator I haven't got it tied into it yet but uh, I'm quite happy that I incorporated the, the magnum energy uh, inverter and the charger um, and I had to go back with the MPPT and um, I'm waiting on another one and I'm going to be adding another six 100 watt panels um, right now I've got eight 100 watt panels and just to clarify when you're going to be incorporating two separate battery banks um, this was the easiest uh, way to to do that was get a battery selector this is a marine grade and you can switch from one battery bank to the other you can run it on both of them one and two or just the new one and you've also got the off position there as you can see I've got the inline fuse that's 175 amp and with um, with the power that uh, that I'm going to be using with the I'm, I'm going to I'm waiting on 250 amp fuses to come in so I do recommend that um, this is the old inverter that's not in use but uh, I'm just going to leave it there um, thinking about wall mounting this inverter having it up uh, initially when I installed it I had shelving and, and everything else that was in the way so and I've got a remote hooked up to the to the inverter and the charger so um, over here this is a 20 amp charger for the two 12s coming out and it comes with a diagram to show you how you can charge 24 volt batteries so that's what I use when the generator is on as well to charge one of the battery banks and I've got alligator clamps on to switch uh, if I wanted to switch over to different uh, different banks so just thought I'd share that okay so here it is and uh, right now I don't have the charger tied in to my generator just yet but when I will when the gener generator is running or the alternative uh, power source you just switch it on here and off uh, to charge up your battery bank otherwise um, if you're just using the inverter, this is the on off button here and you turn it on. It's inverting and it's searching. And as you can see, I'm in a 24 volt system here. So I'm showing right now on battery bank one, I've got just under 26 volts, which is, which is just fine. But, um, and a flash is just show you when it's whatever mode that it's in. So I can turn that off for now. I just want to show you, you can go into some of the specs. If you want to get the temperatures, that's the battery temperature right now is 25 degrees Celsius and uh, 34 degrees inside with the inverter. And like I say, it's a uh, very, very this this system by Magnum Energy has been on the market for a long time, and it's uh, very straightforward and simple to use. And there are so many so many functions and features here it takes a little while reading through the manual to to understand it all and to configure it the way that you would like um for your for your desired system so but uh, i'm quite happy with this setup and i'm glad uh, glad that i upgraded and what i like about 24 volt system versus a for example a 12 volt system is the wiring coming in um, to obviously into your into your uh, your battery bank and 
to the charge controller. It doesn't have to have uh, as thick of a gauge of wire. Um, simply being a higher voltage, it doesn't require, I guess with resistance, it doesn't require as thick of a wire, so you can save quite a bit in that in that route, but um, I'm quite happy I've gone with the, the MagnaSign pure sign uh, inverter. I'm glad I went with the 4024. But again, that's all according to your to your uh, specific needs at your uh, at your place. So, just thought I'd share this. Anyways, um, stay tuned.